Old Geelong Jail, a prison so bleak and hostile that to escape its clutches, inmates would resort to any desperate measure. <laughs> its grim walls, many fearsome felons have been sentenced to life after death. Tonight on Haunting Australia, the abandoned old Geelong jail, since convict days, a place of brutality and misery. You see that? A site said to be swarming with paranormal activity as the alleged ghosts of inmates past stalk its cells and corridors. What's that? I've investigated haunted prisons the world over. Geelong's the top five. What was that? Oh, they're coming. Another chilling challenge for the Haunting Australia team. From the UK, psychic bad boy Ian Lawman, medium and ordained exorcist. And old school supernatural sleuth Ray Jordan. From India, ghost hunter and metaphysicist Gaurav Tiwari. From Australia, accomplished paranormal researcher Alan Tiller. And medium clairvoyant Raylene Cable. From the US, internationally renowned lead investigator Rob Demarest. I've been investigating the paranormal for over 20 years. You name it, I've hunted it. And I believe this team has what it takes to find out what's haunting down under. Located on the southern shores of Victoria, Geelong boasts more heritage buildings per capita than anywhere else in Australia. And where there is history, there are ghosts. The city's spooky sites include the abandoned Geelong Boys Grammar School. Once a seat of learning for the elite, its alumni includes His Royal Highness Prince Charles. But perched only blocks away, this forbidding three-story bluestone lays claim as most haunted, the old Geelong Jail. It's a very cold place. It has a, a very bloody history. Pretty much every inch of the floor here has had human blood spilt on it. This was a prison of misery, mayhem and murder. Geelong Jail opened its fearsome doors in 1853, an impenetrable fortress to house the worst of the worst. It operated for almost a century and a half, until closing its doors in the 1990s Modern era prisoners were locked in the same stone cells that contained convicts in colonial times. <laughs> Geelong Jail was three levels of pain, despair, and death. Four executions, but over 500 confirmed deaths. A common way for feuding felons to dispatch each other was shanking by shiv or homemade knife. How will the team from Haunting Australia handle this fearsome place? The place is imposing, it's menacing, it's scary, it's huge. I think there's going to be a lot of hardcore men inside here, spirit-wise. I think they're going to hate us being in here. I think they're going to push us out and they're going to cause a lot of problems for the investigators. As the ghost hunters enter the cell block, they already face a setback. Hey, look at this guy. Hey. On their last investigation, segueing on a bush track near haunted Woodford Academy, 
Gorav took a bad spill. His teammates are about to learn the full extent of his injuries. I went to the hospital. I thought it was a sprain. But doctors diagnosed that I fractured my tibia. Wow. Well, I'm here to find some spirits, whatever it takes and wherever it takes me. So I'm committed to find some ghosts here. Well, it's good to have you back. Every light inside the stark interior is switched off, plunging the environment into murky darkness. CCTV cameras have been rigged to keep watch on cells and gantries. At Surveillance Central, they'll be monitored constantly. Our paranormal investigators are ready for action. Let the ghostly games begin. First to set off into the gloomy confines of the deserted jail are mediums Ian Lawman and Raylene Cable. Good luck. Have a good one. Both are strapped into high-definition micro-camera rigs, recording at all times to capture any paranormal evidence. At Surveillance Central, Gorav and Ray keep a watchful eye. I feel really, really sick as I'm walking down here. I'm absolutely pooping myself. A psychic is somebody who can pick up on here and now. It's kind of an energy type thing that we grab hold of. Someone's following me. OK, I'm going to go up the stairway. Ian enters the cell that over a hundred years ago housed one of Geelong's most infamous inmates. Suicidally violent, giant of a man, Percy Ramage. So if somebody's been murdered or um, some trauma's taken place, they're the ones wanting to talk to us and explain what happened. I don't know what room it is, but I'm drawn to this room here. I'm aware of a big man, um, as, as I see him. He's, um, <clears throat> he appears a lot bigger than me. I'm well over six foot, and I feel Somebody's walking into my cell and pulled my head back and just cut my throat. Now, one night, he tried to take his own life by cutting his neck open. He screams. Two wardens opened up his cell and very quickly they shackled him. On a gangway directly beneath the cell, Ian again believes he's picking up on Ramage's rampage. I'm just aware of um, somebody being thrown right over the top. Now, he was so big that he managed to push his way past the two jail wardens on the first floor. And on the third level, he jumped for his life. But Ramage got tangled on a crossbar. His shackles got wrapped around it and his arms were almost ripped from his body. A stark reminder of this epic suicide attempt, the bend in the bar is still there today. He wanted out of here. Such supposedly hostile energies trapped in its walls, the investigation of Geelong Jail will test Raylene's nerves. It will be spiritually challenging for me because I'm a female coming into a male environment. I expect the unexpected. Even though she's a very strong medium, we just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, there have been reports that females who are in the area and in certain areas have been um, affected by, by alleged spirits. So, so it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens. When I'm investigating, my process is, is quite simple. I'm very open from the moment I walk into an investigation area. So I do try to set some form of boundary where, yes, I'm an, I'm an open channel, but I, there's certain things that I will and won't put up with from a spirit. The spirits of Geelong are allegedly very aggressive, especially with females. I was in this cell number 75 with, um, with a group and I got scratched on the neck. We walked into one cell and, um, and next thing you know, 
I'd been scratched. One of the other girls had felt shoved against the wall. But the most vicious attack reported is from tour guide Jodie Hemer. She claimed it occurred in the prison kitchen. I was standing um, at the end of the table there one night and I heard a noise to the right of me. I felt gripping up my legs all the way. It was very invasive and scary. I actually ran out of the room screaming. I feel like I've got eyes what, watching me from everywhere. I'm uh, in cell 86. Um, I'm going to close the door behind me. I don't know if I really want to do that, but I will. Is there anyone, is there any spirits still in this, in this confines of this cell? Oh, I just, I heard a male's voice and just asked me what I'm doing here. I feel like um, the soul that was in this cell at some point. Oh, I just felt someone touch the top of my hair. Oh. Oh, don't do that. I'm not giving you permission to touch my hair. This cell is so cold, but yet my head is so hot. I'm, like, my, I'm going out of the room now. My guide's telling me to get out of here. So I think that's a, a strong cue. I just heard him say bye-bye. Oh, I just got him to grab my hand. Ooh. The potential menace of this site is also becoming apparent to Ian. I feel really scared as I'm walking down this staircase. I've got lots of kind of... Hello? What the f was that? It's almost as if I've been followed. It's just this really weird going on in here. In the shower block, where prisoners were at their most vulnerable, many lives were lost to unforeseen attack. Let's just see what's going on in here. There's this team of um, Hibby who um, <clears throat> is in here. I kind of am drawn to this third area here and I'm kind of leaning here, just kind of washing my head like that. And I'm just aware of this Jimmy character coming round the kind of this corner from this area here. <coughs> and shanking me right in the um, kidney. And he's snapped the blade off and I'm to the floor. As a psychic, this is quite intense because there's a lot of energies going on in here and I feel that I'm actually getting ganged up on. This is where the tour guide says she was subjected to ghostly groping. I'm just listening, I could hear something then. I know there's a spirit in here. I just need you to make yourself be known. Oh, oh. oh. <sighs> this energy, get off me. This is all about touching in here. Who are you? And why did you just touch me? Everyone wants to touch me in this place. I'm over it. He tells me his name's his name is James. Is that correct? Yes. Raylene's picked up on James. Ian's picked up on Jimmy. A lot of people that I know called James, they called Jimmy or Jim. Right. Could the murderous Jimmy, encountered in the shower by Ian, be the same spirit Raylene believes to be harassing her? I am watching my back. He's telling me to watch my back. As Raylene heads back to the safety of Surveillance Central, 
She's convinced she's picked up a nasty spirit. The worst that I feel can happen is you can have an attachment. That would be my biggest fear, is that a spirit wants to be with me and not leave me. To remove it, she must first remove herself from its lair. With spirited fingers, she sheds herself of psychic stress. Even to this side as I'm, I'm speaking, I've just got so much energy. I need to clear that energy before I go into further investigation. Otherwise, I, I, I just won't be able to do it. Ian is now all alone in the cell block. Or is he? I don't know what room it is, but I'm drawn to this room here. I'm just going to spin around here. We have lost Ian on the audio. The loud bang, which occurred after Ian shut the cell door, has our psychic on edge. There's nothing there that could have made that noise. I don't know what it was. Um, I shut the door once again. It didn't make the same noise. What was that? With an urge for human rather than ghostly company, Ian returns to Surveillance Central. Hey guys. Hey, hey buddy. Wow, that, that was quite an experience. It was um, really, really weird. Now, as I shut the door, there was an almighty bang. <laughs> Almost like lockdown. That we yeah. noticed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's at that point we actually lost audio for a while. OK. Yeah. Well, that's really, really funny then, because I went really lightheaded and my ears buzzed and I couldn't hear for a split second. So you lost audio, I couldn't hear. Our paranormal investigators weren't the only ones who lost sound. For the first time in his 20-year career, all channels went down on our sound recorder scare. When that noise happened, that, you, that really big bang, we lost audio on both yourself and Raylene, the two together. Not only that, but this thing froze. Was it normal for your, for your no, sound? No, never, 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 never ever happened before. In my opinion so far, this is haunted to hell. Despite his incapacitating leg injury, Gutsy Gorav is bent on proving his worth to the team. On crutches, he hobbles to the far end of the eastern wing. The ground floor is where many apparitions are reported. This intrepid investigator is bent on catching one on camera. Is there anyone with me who would like to show himself? I would like you to come forward and show yourself to me. I was a person who never believed in ghosts and spirits or any existence of paranormal. I was training to become a commercial pilot in 2006 and I was given an apartment by my flight school. But something happened to me. We started witnessing things like poltergeist activity. We started hearing whispers and we could not find anyone there who was doing that. It really challenged my belief system. I started looking into paranormal research. And slowly, gradually, I came across so many things in life that could really made me understand about nature of spirits. When I went back to India in 2009, I established India's first paranormal organization called Indian Paranormal Society. Alan is equally eager to ensnare a spirit. All right, Raylene, earlier on tonight, we had our meeting downstairs, and, yep. and um, I saw something move on the landing up here. With Raylene, he heads to a room adjacent to where his sighting occurred. I live in the town of Kapunda in South Australia. I was a forklift driver in the wineries. I run a lot of um, social media pages to do with hauntings in Australia. I um, write uh, various blogs about different hauntings. We also run SA Paranormal, which is predominantly an investigation team that covers ghosts, UFOs, cryptids and other paranormal things. I first came across the paranormal reading one of my grandfather's books, which was about the Bermuda Triangle, and I would think I would have been about seven years old. It wasn't until I moved to Queensland and I came across a, a ghost tour up there 
and I walked around doing the ghost tour knowing a little bit of the history of myself and the, the tour operator actually got it incredibly wrong. So I started researching it myself and that led into becoming an investigator. You can try and connect with whoever's in here and see what you come up with. You've been seen earlier tonight. I've got a voice recorder there. We've got cameras going. And what we want you to do is let us know who you are. Actually, and I'm feeling quite tall. I'm feeling very tall. I'm not tall. The spirit behind me. I'm just filming you now with a full spectrum video camera. So I'm just going to sweep around the room, see if we get anything. Go in the corners, to the corners. Yeah, yeah quickly. There's a lot of energy on top of my head at the moment. And to my right. Right. Here to here. Mm hmm I'm just getting a sense I don't like it. So oh, I just touch my head, then it just touch the top of my head. Lift Raylene's hair up. Come on, do it. I can feel you're gonna do it, you're just there. This wasn't always just a jail. There was actually a girls' reformatory here as well. Incredibly. In the 1860s and 1870s, a wing of the jail was utilized as an industrial school for orphaned girls, meaning innocent young females were clustered under the same roof as hardened prisoners. One of the most reported apparitions today is a young girl in period garb. The young 12-year-old girl, she just sits about halfway up the stairs. She looks sad. She's got a ragged canvas dress and matty long hair. So I'm wondering if the little girl could come forward for me, please, and touch Raylene or talk to Raylene. Raylene's a mother. She's someone's mum. And if you're missing your mum and you'd like a bit of motherly love, maybe you could come forward and give Raylene a big hug. I'm sure she won't mind. Touch my hands. I need you to tap me twice. Nice and strong, like patty cake, patty cake. I can feel my, I can actually feel my hand going down. But I felt one tap, but I need you to do two taps, sweetie. <laughs> Alan and Raylene head downstairs to investigate the prison kitchen, where a tour guide suffered a terrifying ordeal. En route, Alan suggests a quick detour. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> Did you know it was there? Yep. Oh, 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 good on you. <laughs> Scary mannequins are the bane of ghost hunters everywhere. Good-humoured prank notwithstanding, Alan now realises something serious may be happening inside the jail. All right, Raylene, we're hearing noises at the other end as well. So I'm going to head right down the other end of the jail. If you want to stay down here, is that cool? All right, I'm on my way. So someone was making some noise down here before. Now I'm down here by myself. I'll make those noises again. So we're on the third level, um, Raylene and I. It sounds like doors rattling. That sounds like footsteps right now. There's no one up there. We're very much alone in here and there's definite noises up there. I think we need to get Ian back out here. Something's happening over there. To provide more ghost hunting grunt, Ray also heads out to the cell block. He joins Ian near the gallows.
noise. Is anyone here with us? Tap three times. Where's that coming from? One, two, three. It was coming from over there. I can hear whispering everywhere. I can't pinpoint where it is. It was really, really noisy. There was a lot of noises, a lot of bangs. I could hear whistling. I could hear whispering. I heard like a moan. Come on, let's go, 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 go. This way. The alleged ghosts of old Geelong Jail appear to be staging a paranormal prison riot. I heard like a moan. With unexplained sounds emanating from all corners of the cell block. Where's that coming from? Ian and Ray are determined to chase them down. Come on, go, 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 go. This way. But their investigatory efforts are hampered by the jail's compartmentalized wings designed to contain violent outbreaks. It's as though the cunning criminal spirits are toying with them. OK, who's here? <sighs> what the f was that? Go, 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 it's the other side now. I'm going. Sending them on a wild goose chase from one end to another. All hell broke loose. There were certain noises coming from the left, the right, the centre. It was just phenomenal. I don't know if this is where they used to hang people here. Determined to get to the source of the chaos, Ian returns with Rob to cell 45. What good is it? It's just a... Oh, we can do something. Where earlier, he encountered the spirit of former inmate the suicidal Percy Ramage. <laughs> the psychic and the investigator plan to play paranormal good cop, bad cop with the cell's inmate. Ian, here's what I'm thinking we should do, right? Mm -hmm. You see if you can bring him here. I'll see if I can record him. Okay. Ian issues the challenge. Can you come into this cell and man up? Anybody else out there who wants to walk in this cell? I was aware of things. Rob was kind of aware of something going on. And I thought for a great experiment, it'd be amazing if I stand outside, gear the spirits up and see if they can take on this big guy. If you can hear my voice, there's Rob in there. Let's man up. Go take Rob. Go, I need you to walk in that cell right now. Go on. We've got increasing shadow darkness in the corner right now. OK. Is the purported spirit of Percy Ramage marking its territory? I see this dark mass raise up in the corner until it's about six, seven feet. I mean, this thing's towering over me. Let's switch. Yeah? OK, big guy, it's just you and I. Rob's outside. I'm inside. Let's do it. Then we swapped over roles. And I got the same thing, really vast high shadow, what was easily seven feet, really menacing character. There's some heavy going on down here. <laughs> Sensing he may have caught something during his spirit photography session, Gorav reviews the results at Surveillance Central. I took this, these pictures on the ground floor. OK. You know what I was doing? I was trying to challenge spirits to show themselves. Let's see if I've captured something. What's that? Looks like a humanoid shape. Well, is there someone standing here? Zooming in. They discover someone or something is definitely lurking in the darkness. And I see a 
full body apparition or a human being standing there, but there was no human being as such. Yeah, I can, I can definitely make out the shape. It does look like it's someone standing, you know, looking straight ahead. So what we need to do then is, is take this to analysis. Exactly. And, and inspect it more. Exactly. In the shots taken before and after, no figure is apparent. But in this shot, it can clearly be seen. And here we have a holy grail or a full body apparition. An alleged Geelong ghost is that of a former prison guard. Rather than resting in peace, he patrols the prison in death. If he does roam within these walls, could this be the spirit that terrified a local tour guide one night? Now, just as I'm about to leave, I looked up to the third level of jail and I could see the perfect silhouette of the man looking down at me. But it was enough for me to actually feel so uncomfortable that I had to leave the building, leave the building quick. Although further examination is required, Gorav may have caught the spirit of the prison guard on his ghostly night rounds. Ian is still alone in cell 45 with a seven foot tall shadow. They do, I don't like it in here. Any spirits that may be present in this jail tonight? What was that? I don't have the foggiest clue. It sounded like a door slamming. That's what I've been getting all night. I can't see anyone. I can hear footsteps. That's in there with you. It is. What was that? Oh, they're coming. Do you see that? Some say Old Geelong Jail is Australia's most haunted prison, and it seems that it may have lived up to that reputation with the Haunting Australia team tonight. Ian and Ray witness the prison come alive with phantom bangs and ghostly clangs. Go, 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 it's the other side now. And the evidence is mounting. With Gaurav capturing a photo of what he believes is a full-bodied apparition. They do, I don't like it in here. Now, inside cell 45, Ian seems to be facing off against a seven-foot-tall shadow. <laughs> the spirit of the violent former prisoner, Percy Ramage, perhaps? I can hear footsteps. Outside the cell, Rob has spotted yet another unexplained figure lurking in the gallows. Just watch someone. Hang tight, Ian. On the Geelong jail gallows, cutouts of human silhouettes recreate an execution. Rob observed the dark shadow move between the hangman and the condemned. I saw someone walk across in front of me, but they, they stopped behind a, like a cardboard cutout. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I call out to him, nothing. I jam down there. There's no one there. There's literally no one there. Do you see that? Do you see someone just sneak past here and hide behind here? Rob? Rob? Oh. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, yeah. What happened? I don't know. It's almost like, you know when someone catches your feet from behind you like that? <laughs> you all right? Yeah. All right, I just saw, you see the, the little cutouts yeah. for the demonstration? Uh -huh. I saw someone go walk from behind number one right. to behind number two. Okay. Then they stopped and then they were gone. My camera was aimed straight ahead, right at that area. I've got it, we caught it. But the footage is dark and grainy, leaving Rob unable to make the call that he caught a ghost on camera.
Nevertheless, confident they've locked down some extraordinary evidence, the team calls it a night. Leaving the otherworldly occupants of the jail to their eternal incarceration. Before focusing on evidence analysis, and with adrenaline still pumping from their investigation, the team needs some high-octane release. Ian fancies himself a regular Ayrton Senna. So what's the fastest lap time out there? Uh, the fastest lap time is a 26.1 second lap. And who owns that? That was me. Till today. The gauntlet has been thrown. The ghost hunters helmet up. Defeat is not an option. Speed is my other name. They're going to suck my fumes. Oh, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I can't even drive. <laughs> The race commences. Shortest average time over six laps is winner. True to his bragging, Ian is off to a flying start. Ah! Inside, Alan! But Alan is in the way. Come on, move! For an armchair enthusiast, Ray is having a blast. But there's little chance of him joining the two-minute club. For a non-driver, I'm doing all right. Raylene maintains her position at the back of the pack. <laughs> the checkered flag goes up, lap times tabulated, and psychic speed demon Ian Lawman emerges victorious. Yo! Who's the daddy? Ahead of Alan and Gorov, <laughs> but considerably over the lap record. Defeat is not an option. Demarest is conspicuously missing from the winner's podium. Never before have I seen such injustice. I guarantee you I had a faster lap than any of you. Watch the tape back. You're going to see I whooped on all of you. Jealous loser. Jealous loser. Having pedaled some serious metal, the team is now in study mode. They're ready to review evidence. And what seat of higher learning could be a more apt setting than Prince Charles's old stomping ground, the Geelong Grammar School. They convene in its former assembly hall. First, they learn Alan's amusing prank on Raylene may have paid dividends. OK, team, just have a bit of a watch of this. After me. After you, ladies wow. first. <laughs> Spooky. Prior to a scare, Raylene believes she made contact with the reformatory girl ghost. Moments after her scare, Alan recorded an EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon. Now, as Raylene and I walk out from this area, you're going to hear something. Let's go and do some exploring in areas that aren't known to be. It definitely sounds like a female voice. Was the little girl commenting from beyond the grave on Raylene's fright? My reaction hearing it um, is because it's in the same kind of scene as Raylene's getting scared. Yeah. It sounds like spooky and it's a really weird echo effect of ooky, ooky, ooky afterwards. I, I agree with that. That's what I could get, yeah. Raylene, do you think it was actually a spirit of a, a female or a child taking the mickey out of you because of your just the experience you've just had? Highly likely, Ian, because it doesn't sound like an older person. It would be a younger spirit. Yeah. So, yeah, quite possibly. The girl ghost seemed benign enough, but an EVP catch from Raylene sounds disturbingly malignant. Guys, the next bit of evidence I really want you to listen to, uh, it's... It is really, really scary. Wow. <laughs> Just a growl. And just to clarify, we can hear Alan in the background, right, before yeah. Yeah, the growl comes right yeah. in. Okay. I mean, I drew back. That's spooky. That's scary. I'm still a little bit shaken by it, to be honest. <laughs> What we have here is the triple connection. Yeah. We have 
the technical side, we mm -hmm. recorded this voice, we have the, the provocation technique, and we have the response that you're getting. Mm -hmm. So the entire team, everything we did came together to create this. Yeah. And this is pretty, pretty intense. Good stuff. Yeah, very intense. Good stuff. It's not a jail's not a nice place to be in, but some jails can be more brutal than others. <laughs> Could the spirit of violent prisoner Percy Ramage have been lurking near Raylene during her investigation? <sighs> Gorav has examined his extraordinary photographic evidence closely. I took thousands of pictures here. The whole corridor was empty, there was no one. But in this picture, can you notice something? Yeah, it looks like a guy standing right there. Yeah. Right. What I did, I analyzed this picture, decreasing the gamma level and increasing the exposure. It definitely looks like a person standing there and not a shadow. Mm -hmm. His spirit snap clearly shows a shadowy male figure standing opposite the prison guard's box on ground level. I think I've captured a full body apparition. Very clear and defined though, isn't mm -hmm. it, Lucas? Yeah. And there was absolutely no one in the area at all? No one at all. It, to me, it looks like a guard on duty. Yeah, yeah. Standing there as post. Yeah. Has he snared a shot of one of the jail's most celebrated spirits, the prison guard ghost? Graf, it's an incredible picture. I've seen some photos which have par apparitions, but this full body, uh, I'm totally blown away. I've done hundreds of investigations in over 40 countries around the world, and this photograph is right up there at the top of the best evidence I've ever seen. That, that's a fantastic catch. Old Geelong Jail may never give up its dark secrets. But the Haunting Australia team believes the evidence they collected is more than sufficient to pass sentence. Highly haunted. Is Geelong Jail haunted? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this place had some of the most intense experiences and evidence that I've seen in years. Geelong Jail didn't prove to be disappointing at all. It was an exciting place to be, to investigate. We had some phenomenal results come out. So we got so much evidence that, you know, stuff that covered every kind of section of evidence you could even want, like shadow men, photos, videos, audio. Geelong Jail is up in the top five now of uh, paranormal investigations that I've ever done worldwide. This is it. This had everything you could want. Dale Asylum. Some reports state that over 10,000 people died within these walls. This is the big one for us. Now, investigator Ray Jordan will face his greatest fear. I'm going to be locked into the chiller. No. What the f***? Haunting Australia, all new next Tuesday at 10, only on site.